Hello and welcome to our 2021 Q1 investment update. My name is Jordan Gillis. I'm one of the partners here at Saltus and I'm once again joined by Michael Stimson from our investment management team. So just to set the scene, I'll take you back to our Q4 2020 investment update. And we were sat here pretty positive about the future. Um, you know, we very much expected to make money through 2021, and we were particularly positive on the equity market. We did have concerns about bonds, and we were worried about where we were going to find diversification throughout the year. So, Mike, if you sort of read the news headlines, um, you'd be forgiven for thinking that that is kind of what's panned out. You know, bonds bad, equities good. Uh, is it that straightforward, or, or has it been a little bit more complicated than that? Well, bonds have definitely been struggling, um, and I think that's that's the big story of the first quarter. And really, what's happening is as vaccine programs are starting to be rolled out, investors are looking forward and starting to imagine economies potentially opening up again. And with a global bond market that's already very overvalued, as, as we talked about last time, these inflationary pressures have really spooked the market and led to some, some quite significant falls in prices from, from, from bond assets. And, you know, it, it, is that fair? You know, should investors be worried? Do we think this is a pattern that's, that's going to continue? I think, um, it, it's it's really the speed of the falls that was a bit uh, a bit surprising. If we look at where we've sort of got to, we're we're, we're only back to sort of pre-COVID levels, which you know I, I suppose makes sense given we're we're starting to think about what life is going to be post-COVID. Uh, you know, once vaccines have have been rolled out everywhere, um, but the speed of the falls was 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 quicker than expected, and it, 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 you know we did sort of have quite uh, sort of difficult weeks. A couple of difficult weeks and that sort of has taken the, the shine off the confidence that the investors were feeling as they came into the new year okay and and so back to sort of pre-covid levels it is a, a big part of it as well that really just the level of debt that governments have taken out to sort of fund the recovery has just made the bond market you know huge now even bigger so it's just exacerbated the issue as well as that has that been a bit of an issue Yes, I mean, it certainly hasn't helped. I mean, the, you know, the bond market is already absolutely enormous. So adding, you know, a few trillion, it, it, it doesn't make the biggest difference. But yes, there's even more debt. Now we're having to pay a higher interest rate to service that debt. You know, it's definitely a concern for investors. OK, so, you know, the, the bond market has has definitely been a, a, a bit of a a, a, a struggle and we you know we saw five percent falls in in global bond markets and it's certainly been a wobble um but mild inflation expectations like you touched on there a lot of people would say that's good news for equities so uh, have we seen the reverse of that in the equity market um so i think at, at a sort of headline level you know e equities have gone up you know about four percent depending on on which market you're looking at and and that sort of seems fine I think what that masks is is quite a large rotation under the surface. And so if you look at um, you know some of the, the the COVID losers, some of the airline stocks, for example, that had had such a difficult 2020, you know, they've had a really strong recovery in 2021, a really strong bounce. And on the other side of the coin, you've got you know technology stocks that were brilliant through 2020 that, that have fallen quite a long way. And so while it looks like equities have sort of made quite sort of um, serene progress. The reality is that actually there's been a lot going on underneath the surface. Okay, so you know we've kind of had this falls in in the bond market and then quite a significant rotation in the equity market going on. So you know what has this meant for our portfolios? Because that's quite a lot to deal with, I suppose. Well, I think, um, you know, it's, it's a bit of a mixed bag, to be honest. Um, so the fixed income holdings we had performed pretty well. As, as we said last time, we didn't see much value in in, in the traditional uh, ends of the bond market. And some of our convertible bond managers have held up quite well. Um, also, we've had some good performance from the underlying managers who've, who've produced some outperformance and, and, and that's helped. So fixed income was largely good. Um, in, all, in, in the alternative space, um, We've held a number of investments that that don't like the thought of rising interest rates like gold. So our gold position fell by about 10 percent over the quarter. Gold miners also performed poorly, so uh, not not so good in, in, in the alternatives. And then in the equity in, in the equity positions, you know, some of our tilts haven't performed that well this quarter. 
you know, the emerging markets don't like a stronger dollar, quality growth, again, that had performed so well in 2020 is sort of as underperformed in 2021. And overall, where that leaves us for the quarter is the lower risk portfolios down about half a percent and, and higher risk portfolios up about two and a half percent. But no, nothing really to write home about this quarter, to be honest. OK, so fair to say bit of a bit of a bumpy ride is kind of how you describe it. Yeah, I, th I think so. Uh, but but the sort of bumpy ride continues because, you know, the first week of, 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 of this quarter, you know, we've had quite a big bounce and and actually that that rotation has sort of gone back the other way. So as we look at portfolios today, we're sort of anywhere from flat to plus four and a half percent. So, you know, things are moving quite quickly. OK, and so give, given that that we're kind of we're seeing that those fast movements then and some of those covid winners that you've touched on have perhaps meant that q1 was a bit of a struggle um you know actually are we we're we now seeing another rotation and we're, and we're in the right shape for, for for the rest of 2021 you know or are the portfolios actually a little bit out of date and, and we really need to to make some changes i mean i think that that's the million dollar question jordan and um i i think the answer is that that we we don't know we don't know if this rotation is here to stay. And so what, what we're doing in portfolios um, is, is really balancing out the risk. So where we have been very tilted towards um, the, the companies and the geographies that, that have come out of COVID quicker, um, we're, we're now in the process of sort of balancing out the portfolio. Um, you know, we've had, there's been quite a long period, even before COVID, where, you know, quality growth stocks have really outperformed their value counterparts you know we know that doesn't go on forever and so while we're not quite ready to call the end of that cycle we certainly want to have exposure to both in portfolios okay and and sort of you 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 kind of touched on on our equity exposure there but you know let, let's go back to that that bond market piece um you know we were kind of like i said at the beginning we were worrying about um overpriced bonds and so where are we going to find diversification so um you know does do the falls sort of open up some opportunity for us at the moment? Is that something we're we're looking at carefully? Or what do you feel about that element of the por portfolios? Yes, I think that's exactly right. I mean, sort of as I said, we're we're only back to sort of pre-COVID levels, so so it's not like there's screaming value in 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 the bond mm -hmm. market. And and before COVID, it didn't seem like the bond market was cheap, right? The bond market's been expensive for a very long time. Yeah. Um, but it, it, there's certainly a lot more areas that we're we're looking at today. And while we haven't sort of pulled the trigger on anything, um, if we were to see further falls, you you, you definitely see some investments in in, in those areas. OK, so keeping an eye on it, but haven't made any sort of significant changes in, in the bond positions yet. Have we pulled the trigger on anything in our in our sort of specific equity positions then, Mike? Yeah, so, so we have done, um, you know, what, what, one of the, the best performing holdings for a very long time uh, was the Linzel Train UK equity fund that we've held for, for over 10 years. We, we sold that that position in Q1. Again, this is a, a portfolio very much tilted towards those quality growth type companies that had done so well in 2020. Um, and we replaced that with with RWC Global Equity Income, which again is um, is a fund that owns more of the the airline stocks, more of the companies that haven't done as well as as uh, as some of those other names. Um, I think perhaps if we were being critical of ourselves, we 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 could possibly have done more a bit quicker. Um, and you know we're, we're certainly considering that at the moment. And I think over the coming you know, weeks you can expect to see as a sort of more broadening out of exposures in portfolios. Okay, and and so just to sort of uh, sort of settle people's nerves, I suppose, because it's it's all sounding potentially a little bit bumpy. You know, uh, still confident that actually it's it's onwards and upwards from here. You know, what what do things look like going going forwards? Yeah, so I think you know it it, it has been a, a difficult quarter. But again, we, we sit here today at the beginning of April and, and all clients are making money for the year. And I think, you know, we, we remain positive. We expect to make money through the rest of 2021. But we do think they're going to be some bumps in the road. We do think, you know, that they're, they're going to be wobbles here and there. And so, you know, it's, it's down to us to to use those as opportunities to to, to buy assets that perhaps get, get a bit cheaper um, and just make sure that we have the right diversifiers in portfolios throughout. OK, so 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 kind of to, to summarise for everyone, um, you know, there's, there's been quite a lot going on in Q1, obviously, with the, the bond market falls and the equity market rotation. Um, it's definitely been quite a, a significant change from what we saw towards the end of 2020. Um, 
and there's a kind of a big decision for us now as to whether that's a permanent change or just representative of, of a market wobble. Um, you know, it, it, is that sort of a, a good summary of kind of where we're at and we're sort of at decision making mode right right yeah. now? Yes, I think that's right. I, I think we're not looking to make make a call one way or the other. You know, where where we are is we're sort of hedging our bets a little bit and trying to to build a portfolio that's that, that's going to make you money regardless of, of of which way this this sort of continues to go. Um, I, I think we do want to reduce our reliance on you know the really good stories from 2020 because um, that's probably not going to be something that that carries on indefinitely. Okay, fantastic. Well, look, Mike, thanks so much for joining me again. And uh, if, as always, if you have any questions, please do get in touch directly uh, with, with either of us or your advisor. And we'd be more than happy to discuss them with you. And we look forward to seeing you at our next quarterly investment update.